Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com, and today let's talk about using reference material in Photoshop, or really in any software. In the past, all the examples I've given you have been using specifically Photoshop canvases. And that's really nice because it's all the tools we're familiar with. If you've got a second monitor, they're fine, and you can just sort of put it over there. But if you only have one monitor, which I think is more common, you've got a problem. Let's say here I'm making this sketch, and the reference that I want to use is this piece of concept art. What I really want is the image right on top of my painting, but I don't want it to kind of get in the way. So I've been using a really neat piece of software called Pure Ref. So let's open that up and we can see how useful this is. So it says there's nothing here, and what it's asking for is just images from my hard drive. Now they're not going to make a new file like Photoshop would, these are just going to be references to other files. And you actually can save these groupings of images. So I'm going to open one that I already made. And you can see here that I have three images. These are just images from my reference folder, and I put them into a new pure ref document. And as I said, with my sketch, what I want to look at is this one here. And I want to be able to paint at the same time. Well, this is pretty neat because here you can see I can manipulate one canvas. I can rotate it, zoom, whatever I want to do. I could even go full screen and do my painting. But this reference just sort of stays right here. And I can also go back to the reference and I can manipulate it. So maybe I want to zoom in at some really specific little detail here that then would allow me to kind of go in and work on my own painting. This is just like Photoshop, except so much leaner and cleaner. There's no extra border around this image. I can have multiple images. And all of it just sort of sits wherever I want it inside of Photoshop. So let's take a look at a few more things that the software does, because I really think you're going to like how this works. So one thing is you can just move this canvas wherever you want. Let's say I want it here on the upper left-hand corner of my screen. Maybe that works better for my layout. That's fine. I can change the size of this panel. Maybe I want to make it the whole width of my screen, but very short. And then I would sort of rearrange my images to fit with inside of that size. Another thing I could do would be to change the scale of an image itself. So here I can kind of enlarge this. And I'm doing all this with keyboard shortcuts. So there is a little bit of learning you have to do to kind of get used to the new keyboard commands. But if you're like me, you'll just remap them, which is very easy. And then it'll feel a little bit more like Photoshop. So here I've laid these out in a nice way. And with this layout, I can look at sort of three different images while I paint, but really most of my screen is still available here for painting. This is very powerful. But maybe what you want is actually just one image that can kind of switch as you're painting. So you're going to use less screen real estate here, we'll say upper right hand corner, just about like that. But I want to be able to flip between these other images that are on my canvas. That's actually really easy too. So here I can just use the left and right arrow keys and it can just switch between the actively focused image. And of course it's smart enough to know to try and fill this canvas with as much of the image as it can. So depending on the aspect ratio of the image you'll get sort of better or worse results with this. But this means that you can leave the window alone, kind of size it as it's nice for your document, and then all you have to do is with the left and right arrow keys just sort of switch around. Okay, one other really neat feature with this is the ability to work with large groups of images. So here I'll grab my uh, reference folder here, and I'm just going to select a big chunk of these images. Now if I were to drag these into a Photoshop document, there'd be no easy way to lay them out in a big grid, not in a single image. Well, here it just sort of does it automatically. It thinks about it for a minute, and then you zoom out and you can see that it has sort of created this wonderfully packed in sheet. Now maybe you don't want quite this many images, but you could see how easy that was. The organization goes even stronger than that. You can select a few of these images, so maybe I want to work with these on their own. I want, we'll say, one to be bigger, one to be here like that. Well then I can take just a selection of those, and holding the control key and using the arrow keys, I can just align these automatically. So if I want to sort of pack them differently, the designers have set the software up to just be really good at the stuff we always do with reference. The software doesn't do a lot of things, but the things that it does are really, really smart. They're the things that we all do with reference and don't think about how time consuming it is.
Reference art is one of those quality of life things. It's a necessity, we all have to do it, but it can just be so much easier and cleaner if we use the right tools. And I've been using the wrong tools for a long time, and I think this is a great solution. So if you go to pureref.com, you can download your own copy for either Windows or Mac. And I will say that this is name your own price software, so you can choose whatever you want, but please give these guys what they deserve. This is valuable software, it's clean, and we should support this sort of stuff. So get out there and make some cool reference art and have fun painting. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.